pandemic taught us anything, it was about the importance of air freight. It kind of saved us through that bad COVID time. But what's happening now? Where are we going, going forward? We're joined by Sanjeev Gardia, who is the vice chairman of TIACA, which is the Air Cargo Carriers uh, International Global Association, and also the CEO and founder of Astral Aviation in Nairobi. Sanjeev, welcome to the program. So we've gone through this punishing time, but it's growing, isn't it? How was your business? Uh, the business which I started 22 years ago is experiencing a lot of growth in the last three years. And we've been very fortunate and blessed uh, for uh, coming to the rescue of uh, uh, billions of people in Africa, uh, moving perishables, uh, first of all, from uh, our hub in Kenya into the UK, and also flying uh, perishables also into Europe. But what has happened is that in the last three years, it's actually taught us a lot of new things. And I think the most important thing is resilience, the ability to fly under very difficult conditions. And this is something that we've actually been able to do, whether it's flying perishables to Europe, whether it's flying PPEs and face masks and face shields all over Africa, and also flying the COVID-19 vaccines as well in 2021, for which it, it took up a lot of our time and also a lot of our resources were actually engaged in moving the vaccines within Africa. 2022 has actually been a, a, a great year. We've had some level of stability. We've actually seen that the vaccines uh, shipments have actually reduced. We don't, we don't see them on news anymore. It, it's, it's not breaking news anymore. So we're now getting back to uh, making sure that we continue to operate our perishable flights uh, into Europe. We recently started flying into Dubai and Hong Kong. And this is something we started last year with the arrival of our Boeing 767. And we're very excited because even when you look at the market in Africa, Africa is really doing very well. We're operating six flights a week from Nairobi to Johannesburg. So overall, we're uh, very confident that the cargo sector will continue to do well. So during this period of 2019 to 2022, we never stopped flying even for a single day. We were one of those airlines which continued to operate. And of course, uh, we had to make sure that we live up to the challenges. And this is something that we were able to do. Now, one of the challenges, surely, is that the fact that the airline industry has woken up to the fact that cargo is important. And we've heard the different airlines talking about investing in freighters and kind of taking you on. They've gone through passenger to freighter conversions. Is it going to get competitive and you're going to get squeezed and start fighting? Well, to be very honest, the air cargo market in Africa has very few players. Because we are a privately owned airline, we are the largest privately owned cargo airline in Africa. But you also have the government-owned airlines, uh, which are doing very well. A good example is Ethiopian Airlines. So for the last 22 years, we've actually been competing with all the Middle Eastern carriers. But we have a very unique philosophy is we compete and collaborate. So we compete with all the 30 airlines who we collaborate with because we fly to parts in Africa where they don't fly to. So what they do is they bring the cargo into our hub in Nairobi. And then we take it to Somalia, we take it to Sudan, we take it to Rwanda and all the places where there's limited capacity. So we have to compete and collaborate. And that's uh, our philosophy. And, and the amazing thing is that we, we have a lot of competitors, but we also partner with them and we actually open up Africa to them. OK, so you're getting to the parts that, that others can't reach sometimes. Thinking about that, there's a lot of um, rural areas and so on, and we've seen drone activity working into the smaller end of the packaging market. Is that something you think is going to work in your kind of business? Oh, absolutely, Alan. And, uh, three years ago, uh, when we last met, uh, we had an interview in Cairo, if you remember, when we talked about the use of drones in Africa. And we've set up a separate company. We've been licensed by our civil aviation to fly drones in Africa. We've entered into various collaborations. For example, in the UK, we have a collaboration with a company called Skyports, which does the drone delivery for NHS. So we're actually working with them. We're working with Swoop Aero, which is an Australian company. And the amazing thing is that we have partnerships with various drone manufacturers, including Singular Aircraft. If you remember the company which makes the Flyox cargo drone, we've also formed some new partnerships in the US with Natalus, with uh, Reliable Robotics, we're talking to Elroy. So there's a lot of exciting developments out there. So what we're trying to do is to bring in the drone technology to Africa. And Africa is the, the, the showcase for drones. And if you remember what Zipline did in Africa, has now enabled them to fly drones in the United States for Walmart. So I really believe that Africa has the right uh, platform 
the civil aviation is a lot more accommodating when it comes to drone technology giving approvals for specific uh, flight conditions. And this is really exciting time for us because we are the first airline in the world which declared that we will have cargo drones as a part of, of our fleet. So what we see and it is in the next two to three years time, we would be operating flights on cargo drones on a scheduled basis. So for example, we would actually be flying a drone from Nairobi to Kigali to carry two tons of cargo, which is something that is unthinkable. So these are some of the advantages we have in being in Africa. We're so excited because we really see the need for these drones because we have all the challenges. We have very poor infrastructure. We have insecurity in some of the places that we fly to. And of course, the costs are significantly lower on a cargo drone compared to a fixed wing aircraft. So we want to bring in all these benefits for the next uh, uh, phase of Astral's growth plans. And I look forward to the day when I can invite you to my airport in Nairobi and you can actually witness a, a drone delivery for cargo. Fantastic. Sanjeev, it's great to hear that there is a real strong future technology as well as good labour. So thank you very, very much for joining us. Thank you.